Factors affecting transpiration. We know that transpiration is the movement of water through a plant. It starts at the leaves where water diffuses out from the leaf to the surroundings. This happens through tiny holes in the bottom of the leaf called stomata. This causes water inside the leaf to evaporate and take the place of the water that has left. And this now causes more water to be pulled up the plant through the stem and in from the roots, through vessels such as a xylem. Finally, water enters the roots by osmosis. So we have water diffusing out of the leaves, which then causes more water to evaporate inside the leaves. This then causes water to be pulled up the plant inside the xylem, and then more water enters the roots via osmosis. The movement of water through a plant is called transpiration, and this is a transpiration stream. In this video, we're going to be focusing on factors that affect the rate of transpiration. Okay, there are four main factors, temperature, light intensity, wind, and humidity. Let's see how these factors affect the rate of transpiration. Let's start with temperature. If there's a higher temperature, with a higher temperature, particles will have more kinetic energy. This includes water molecules. As a result, the water molecules that are leaving will have more energy and will be able to leave faster. This means that the rate of transpiration increases. Light intensity. This is going to involve the tiny holes in the bottom of the leaf called stomata. When there's more light, there's going to be more stomata opening up. That means more water can escape, and again, increases the rate of transpiration. Moving on to wind. So we know that when water leaves the plant, it's going to hang around outside the plant for a while. That means the water inside the plant cannot escape because there's already water standing outside. In other words, there's no concentration gradient. So, wind comes and blows away all of the water that's on the outside. Now, we just have water inside the plant, and the water on the outside has left. This means we have a concentration gradient again, so water will once again be able to diffuse out. Once it's outside, the new water molecules will not want to leave. Again, wind blows away the water molecules on the outside, creating a gradient for water molecules to leave. So, wind pushes away water molecules. This helps to maintain a concentration gradient, and as a result, water always diffuses out. And again, this increases the rate of transpiration. So the more windy it is, the more transpiration will occur. Last one, humidity. So humidity is just another way of saying how much water vapour is in the air around you. Imagine it has rained on a hot summer's day. You can feel the air is quite moist and sticky. In other words, it's very humid. So, if there's lots of water vapour in the air around you, or around the plant in this case, that means the water molecules inside the plant will not want to leave. Just like before, there isn't much of a concentration gradient for them to diffuse out of. So, the water molecules will not diffuse out. However, if it's not humid, that means the water molecules now have a huge concentration gradient and as a result will leave the plant. So, when it's less humid, that means it's more likely for transpiration to occur. Okay, let's talk about how we can investigate different factors that affect transpiration. In order to do this, we're going to use a potometer. It looks something like this. So, we have a plant over here, that's going to be our main subject of this experiment. As for the rest of the apparatus, we can see over here we have a capillary tube and an air bubble. So, how does this work? Well. As the plant transpires, it's going to lose water. So, to replace the water that it has lost, it's going to take up water from the apparatus. This means there's going to be a continuous stream of water moving into the plant. 
and as a result, the air bubble will also move. So, we can measure the distance that the air bubble has moved using the ruler. And the more distance that it has moved, that means more transpiration has occurred in the plant. So now we have the perfect setup to investigate the four different factors that can affect transpiration. Temperature, wind, humidity, and light intensity. If we're investigating temperature, we can place heaters around the plant. For wind, we can place a fan near the plant. For humidity, we can use a humidifier. This is basically like a little machine that releases water vapor. And for light intensity, we can use LED lights. The reason we use LED lights is because they don't emit as much heat as normal bulbs. So that means we can remove temperature out of the equation when we're testing only for light. Again, you're going to notice the bubble is going to keep moving. That's fine. All you have to do is just record how much it's moved and compare it. How about when it gets to the end? How do we get the bubble to go back to the beginning? Should we smash up the apparatus and build a new one? Mm, not really. Over here we have a reservoir. Right now the tap is closed. If we open the tap, water is going to rush down into the capillary tube and push the bubble back to the beginning. Then we can close the tap and restart our experiment. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.